Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another U.S. DTL Talks Time presentation. I'm your host, Grace De La Pena. For this quarter Talks Time, we welcome back Guida Brown from Guided by Guida. She will be discussing the misuse of gabapentin. She has over 30 years of experience working in nonprofit, and more than 15 of those years were working with individuals with substance use disorder. Guida is a substance abuse counselor, FAS disorder trainer, and intoxicated driver program assessor certified by the state of Wisconsin, who also served as a member of the faculty at Concordia University, University of Wisconsin Parkside, and Gateway Technical College. Please note, opinion presented in this session are those of the presenter and do not reflect any official policies or position of USDTL. We have a lot of attendees today, so we will try to answer the questions that are most relevant to the presenter's expertise during our limited Q&A time. For those of you that are not able to stay for the full presentation, this event is being recorded and we will share with everyone that registered. So without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Guida Brown. Hello, I'm Guida Brown, the principal for Guided by Guida. I wanna start by saying that I am not a prescriber, I'm simply an educator. I've watched our nation be ravaged by the opioid crisis caused by pharmaceuticals, and now I fear that I'm watching another dangerous medication be overprescribed. The problem, as I see it, is that we the people are somewhat willing accomplices in our healthcare crisis. We want to feel better, so we do what the doctor says without understanding the possible impact. Gabapentin, also known by the name brand Rotten, was approved as an anticonvulsant in 1993. And by 2019, there were 69 million gabapentin prescriptions dispensed annually in the United States, making it one of the 10 most commonly prescribed medications nationally. Hydrocodone, on the other hand, was approved by the FDA in 1943 as a cough suppressant and was the 10th most prescribed prescription in the US in 2019 after the height of the prescribed opioid crisis. Now, depending upon what list you look at, these are gonna be different numbers. They might not be 10 and nine or eight, whatever. Um, but I do want you to notice that of the top 10 drugs, these two are the only mood altering ones on there. So there are things like blood thinners, Synthroid, insulin, those could be on the top 10 list, but these two, hydrocodone and, and gabapentin, are the only two on that top 10 list that are mood altering substances. So that means that there are a lot of prescriptions being written for mood altering substances in order for those to be on the top 10 list. Gabapentin, Neurotin, and pregabalin, which is Lyrica, are both gabapentinoids but they're treated differently with gabapentin, not currently a controlled substance at the federal level, but Lyrica or pregabalin is. Um, I want you to notice again, 1993, it was approved to treat epilepsy. Then it started being used to treat nerve pain, especially that experience from shingles. And now it's prescribed off-label, these are all off-label except that anticonvulsant, to treat pain, restless legs syndrome, anxiety, hot flashes, migraine, bipolar, post-op nausea, all sorts of things. And our pets, our pets get lots of prescriptions for gabapentin as well. So we're not quite to the same level as we were with opioid prescriptions, but we now have enough prescriptions of gabapentin for one of every four adults, not to mention all those written for our pets. And that only took us 30 years instead of the 70 or so we needed to completely overuse opioids. There is evidence that gabapentin at doses over 900 milligrams may lead to as much as a 60% increase in the likelihood of opioid related death comparable to misuse of opioids alone. So note that uh, normal prescription dosages are between 100 milligrams and 24 100 milligrams per day. Um, you don't just take one pill, you tend to take handfuls of the gabapentin. And again, there's evidence that anything over 900 milligrams 
leads to a 60% increase in the likelihood of opioid related death when taken with opioids. It's a central nervous system depressant. And so when com combined with opioids or benzodiazepines, there's risk of respiratory depression. However, the drug is safe on its own. Now, again, when it's in one of the top 10 prescri prescribed drugs, is it always being taken on its own? And that's really the big concern here. So gabapentin is currently being overprescribed or misprescribed. It's being misused and it's causing death. I need to reiterate, I am not a prescriber. And I know that there are some fabulous prescribers out there who are completely responsible. And there are some who aren't, as we saw during the opioid crisis. So let's look again at what gabapentin is prescribed for. First, it's an anticonvulsant. That's what the FDA approved it for in 1993. Then it started being prescribed off-label for nerve pain, especially nerve pain that was associated with shingles. Then again, all off-label now, other pain, restless leg syndrome, anxiety, bipolar disorder, ADHD, post-op nausea, itching, vomiting, skin picking, alcohol withdrawal, alcohol cravings, uh, hot flashes, migraine, and our pets. Our pets get prescriptions for gabapentin for pretty much all of the same things that humans get prescriptions for. Recent data suggests that over 80% of gabapentin prescriptions are for off-label uses, yet a study indicated that prescribers rely primarily on informal information from colleagues and meetings, which puts into question the accuracy of their information about the potential off-label uses of gabapentin. This led the researchers to suggest the need for more evidence-based information on off-label drug use. Take a look again at this list of how it's being prescribed and consider if any of these people might have other prescriptions and if they do, if those other prescriptions are for either benzodiazepines or opioids because those are the real concerns when it comes to a prescription for gabapentin. Since gabapentin isn't an opioid, there seems to be the idea that it can't be dangerous, but it can. Gabapentin has known abuse potential and has been reported as being highly pursued for use in potentiating or intensifying the use of opioids. A recent Nature Communications article indicates that, quote, a profound level of co-prescribing with opioids and benzodiazepines has been observed, increasing the risk of life-threatening central nervous system and respiratory depression, end quote. And that, quote, increasing concerns have been expressed with regard to abuse and dependence risk of gabapentinoids with or without other medications, end quote, indicating that, quote, parent, patients who have a history of opioid, benzodiazepine, or alcohol misuse have been reported as being vulnerable to misuse of gabapentinoids. The rise of gabapentinoid consumption may represent another medication misuse crisis. So the people who are use, misusing gabapentin seem to be the same people who misuse both opioids uh, actually all three, opioids, benzodiazepines, and alcohol. In one study, 15% of respondents reported that they were using gabapentin specifically to get high. And that number re represented a 165% increase from one year to the next, but an almost 3,000% increase from 2008, which again, illustrates the danger of gabapentin right now. We're seeing it written it so many more prescriptions to so many more people for so many more reasons. And the people who it's being written for often already have substance use disorder or they're using other central nervous system depressants, which leads to death. 
misuse of gabapentin in concert with opioids has been associated with a fourfold raised risk of respiratory depression, which can, of course, lead to death. Benzodiazepines in concert with gabapentin are also of concern since both depress respiration. In my little corner of the world, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, overall toxicity deaths increased 14% from 2018 to 2021. However, in 2018, Kenosha had its very first toxicity death that included gabapentin. And in 2021, there were 11. That is, gabapentin involvement in toxicity deaths increased 1,000% in four years. Again, we're seeing it more and more misused, causing deaths, showing up in death reviews. Gabapentin was detected in a total of 135 fatalities in 2020 alone, compared to 168 total fatalities between 2012 and 2016 combined. Um, gabapentin was the primary cause of death in 23 individuals of those 135. So what can be done? Uh, federally, gabapentin can be scheduled, which has led to reduced prescriptions in states that scheduled it. Some states have already scheduled gabapentin as, as pre-gabalin has been scheduled at the federal level, which is a first step in getting a handle on how much is being prescribed to whom and with what other prescriptions. If it's scheduled, we pay closer attention to it. We know who's getting it, what they're getting it for, and what they're getting it with. Um, next, prescribers need to be responsible for what they're prescribing, to whom and for what. Those who are at risk for substance use disorder should be prescribed gabapentin sparingly, if at all. Those who are using benzodiazepines and or opioids should be warned about the risks or not prescribe gabapentin at all. And prescribers should be sure that gabapentin actually works for what they're prescribing it for. Being high isn't a cure. I mean, oftentimes we get medication for things that make us feel good, but they don't necessarily cure the problem that we're getting it for. That was a huge issue with opioids, right? We felt good, um, but it didn't fix anything. They took away the pain. And so a consideration for gabapentin is the same thing. Is it really doing what it's supposed to be doing? That off-label use, is, that, is it really curing it or do we just feel better all around and gabapentin is being misused. We also know that testing works. If there is a concern about misuse of drugs, gabapentin should be on the panel of drugs to be tested for, since the more prescriptions that are written, the easier diversion becomes. People are having easy access to medication, easy access to um, get gabapentin, and that's because more and more prescriptions are being written for it. Again, I, my, I have four dogs and they get prescriptions for gabapentin. Um, easy to get a prescription, therefore it's easy to use it and misuse it. And so if we have a concern about somebody misusing substances and we're testing them anyway, we really need to make sure that we're testing them for gabapentin as well. And then we need to be better consumers. Patients need to be better consumers. We need to pay closer attention to what we're being prescribed, what we're being prescribed it for. Again, the concern that this is originally an anticonvulsant. I had a conversation when it came up that I was doing this training. I had a conversation with somebody who said, you know, there's nothing wrong with gabapentin. I'm on it. It's just a nerve blocker. And I had to say, no, it, it's not a nerve blocker. It's an anticonvulsant, and it could be being used for all of these other things. I, another person in a similar conversation said, well, I'm on codeine and uh, gabapentin. Is that okay? I'm not her doctor. I can't tell her whether or not that's okay. But we know that we made a, a pretty high, big impact in teaching consumers, teaching patients to pay attention to what they're being prescribed. Children should not be being prescribed opioids. Um, everyone in their chicken should not be being prescribed gabapentin. So we need to pay attention to what we're being prescribed, why we're being prescribed it, and when we're using it. I just wanted to make sure you have my references. I did have quite a few references um, that I used for this presentation. One of them, however, is my own blog, The Four C's of Addiction. 
yeah, but that has references in it too. So here you go. And that's it. Again, I am Guida Brown, the principal for Guided by Guida. I can be reached at guidedbyguida at gmail.com. And you can follow my blog at thefourseasofaddiction.com. We will have time for some questions. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this.